From Washington, D.C. to the heart of America, welcome to Mark Alford's America. I'm freshman congressman from Missouri, Mark Alford, and I believe in America. I believe in you, and most importantly, I believe that our greatest days are still ahead. You know, each week we take you behind the scenes to share the stories, news, legislation, to meet the great folks that I get the honor of working with to help shape our wonderful nation. Well, today we're doing something a little bit different. We are coming to you from Israel. That's right. We are on the portico of the King of David Hotel in Jerusalem. We can see the Temple Mound from where we're sitting right here. This is a trip for congressmen and women put on by the American Israel Education Foundation. And tonight we have two members of that. Matt Engel, he's on the board with Betsy Korn. You'll be hearing from them. But also with us tonight is Russell Fry the president of the freshman class for the 118th Congress. He is a congressman from the 7th District of South Carolina, and Eric Burleson from the 7th District, just below our district in Missouri. Good to have you guys here. Can you believe we are out on a cool night in Jerusalem? Inside, we can see the Temple Mound. Uh, tomorrow, we are walking over, or we're going to go over and see the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, and all the, the religious sites that we hold so dear to our our religious traditions. Eric, what's your impression of being here? Well, the, for me, this is, um, as a Christian, this is um, this was a bucket list item. It's something that I, I, I've always wanted to see and put, you know, through the, see firsthand the stories that, the place where the stories that I've read about my whole life but more importantly, now that as a lawmaker, I think it's important that we're here, given the geopolitical situation. And we have had unbelievable meetings that I think we'll touch on that have really that are life changing meetings about uh, what's happening in Israel. Russell, when you last night we went to or maybe the night before, I've kind of lost track, but we went down into the old city of David. They have dug down some 30, 40 feet, layers upon layers of history. We saw where King David's house used to be and and Hezekiah, the, the waterway that he built and the pool of Shalom where Jesus healed the blind man in the Bible. We read about that. How are seeing these sites changing your life? Well, I think, you know, Eric kind of hit the, you know, just hit it square on the head. You walk in the same place that these historical figures walked. You see roughly the same things that they saw and you grow up and and you learn about these things uh, from a book and you believe and you uh, you have faith. But then to have the, the reality set in that, holy cow, this whole city, this whole country, quite frankly, is built layer on layer on history. And it's from a historical perspective, it's awesome to see them uncover this. Uh, but from a faith journey perspective, last night was just absolutely out of this world. APAC has put on this trip, and they've, they've done this for years and years. Um, it's something we've looked forward to, to coming on for some 15 months now. Originally, uh, Kevin McCarthy would come on these trips, and, and we were supposed to do this earlier on. And then, of course, he had a, some job issues. Uh, he's no longer the Speaker of the House. But he was so excited about bringing us on this trip. That's all he could talk about. And uh, I think we kind of miss him uh, this time around. Matt, how many of these trips have you been on? Uh, so this is the uh, the first trip that I had the privilege to go on with the uh, AIF uh, with members of Congress. But I've uh, I've been to Israel at least uh, twelve to fifteen times or something through my life. First as a uh, as a, as a young teenager, um, and um, to me, it's just incredible to be here uh, to appreciate the history, the the kind of shared traditions. And and for me, when I think of Israel, I think of uh, family. Which you know, while I don't have any family in Israel. Uh, right now, just the, the, the generations and generations that go before all of us into our shared tradition, the Judeo-Christian world, and to just to be able to be here and meet the people and to see their everyday lives and how how they're living under under such you know sometimes challenging situations, um, but thriving in in a country that's less than a hundred years old, it's just very special to be here. So, so you've been here many times. You've seen the historical sites. What is the most impactful historical site for you, and why? Well, you mentioned uh, Ir, De Ir David, City of David, and to me that is uh, just incredible. I mean, when you see the Bible come to life and you see uh, archaeological fact that confirms it, it's just, it, it blows my mind away to think that we are walking through the steps of David and, and Solomon 
and Jesus and 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 so many uh, incredible biblical and religious leaders that have come before us. So it's incredibly special for me to, to see that. Betsy, what is the purpose of bringing congressmen and women here to see for themselves all this tradition and now the the conflict, and we'll get into that a little bit later, the conflict between Hamas and Israel? So APAC is the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, and we're the pro-Israel lobby, and our mission is to ensure that the United States stands with its ally Israel. And for so many reasons, and a big reason is we have shared common values, and Israel is the only democracy in this part of the world, and we are better together, the United States and Israel. And that is our mission. We take members of Congress to Israel. I've been on a number of these missions with members of Congress, and I had the great pleasure of being on a few of those with Kevin McCarthy, and he really is wonderful, and we miss him, and he's a great leader. And it's it's really interesting for us to see, particularly freshmen who've never been to Israel before, it's it's really amazing for us to see Israel through your eyes. And the the religious and historical part is 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 eye-opening and life-changing for, for almost everybody that comes here. But then strategically, it's very important for us to take you down south where we went today. Um, unfortunately, we're in a time of war, so being down south was, was really unbelievably difficult today. But it's also really important to go up north to the Golan and to, to stand on the Golan and look and see how close Lebanon is and how close Syria is. And I think when members of Congress go back and they vote and they have issues that come up with Israel to actually be educated and to know that Israel is a tiny country the size of New Jersey with enemies on every border, but really close on their borders. I've stood up on the Golan and I've seen rockets go off and I've seen Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah flags within a few hundred yards. And I think that's very, very powerful. Why is it important that the U.S. support Israel? We have the same values. We believe in in what's right in the world. We we share a lot of commonalities. As Matt said, the, the Judeo-Christian tradition is very strong. But this is really the birthplace of all religion. And we are better together as allies. And we work together wonderfully as allies. And we all need to, to remember that. Right now, we have not funded a supplemental relief package for Israel. Um, I think that's, uh, we need to get that done. And uh, I don't know how it's going to get done. I don't know when it's going to get done. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Russell, what are your thoughts on that? From a legislative perspective, there's there's vehicles, right? That's how I look at a bill, right? That how can you get from point A to point B? The end result is, and again, we've seen this firsthand today, they need the help, they need the equipment, not only for the message that it sends, but for the equipment and things that you're going to do. If, if the mission is to eradicate Hamas, and that is Israel's mission, and to make sure that they don't come back into power, so they don't have these incursions and terrorism activities on their border, the longer that we wait, the worse it becomes. So I think it's really important, however that vehicle looks by itself or, or whatever, that we that we need to do that. I think, and preferably for me, if you had a, we had this in the House a couple of weeks ago, where you had the bill that came up. It was a standalone package. I think that's the best way to do it. It's the cleanest way to do it. It doesn't muddy the waters. Israel needs to be the sole focus here, and I think it's time that the Senate and, and quite frankly, the administration get on board with that. Eric, what are your thoughts on the funding uh, is- Israel? Yeah, whenever I ran for office, um, I would, you know. Often be asked about foreign aid, and the I would say you know in general I'm skeptical of foreign aid, but for one country and that's Israel for an an innumerable number of reasons. I think that Israel as a nation we have to keep in mind that they are basically taking the punches for us as Americans. They're on the front lines, and if and if Israel were were not in its position the enemy that Israel is facing would would quickly turn its attention and its gaze on the United States. And so I think that we have to recognize that. I also think that, um, you know, as a Christian, look, the Bible specifically says in the Old Testament says, he who honors or, you know, honors Israel 
you know, will be blessed or, and who, he who curses will be cursed. And I don't want to be on the other end of that. I want to be, um, you know, when it comes to the end times, I want to be the nation that is rallying behind um, the right cause and the right, the right people. Mm, well said. Hey, listen, uh, we're going to be right back after these commercial breaks. Um, we are on the portico of King David Hotel overlooking Temple Mound uh, out with some friends here. And we're talking about Israel and the the link between America and Israel. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what we witnessed today. We actually went to a kibbutz down in the southern part, right uh, just a stone's throw from the Gaza Strip. Uh, We saw some of the sites that were unbelievable, some of the sites that the public, general public, does not get to see. And we're going to talk about the impact that that's had on us, some of the people that we met along the way, and and share some of those stories when we come back. You're listening to Mark Alford's America. Stay with us. Welcome back to Mark Alford's America. Each week, we get a chance to go behind the scenes of Washington, D.C. to meet the people that I get a chance to work with to help make our country great again. Tonight, we're doing something a little bit different. We are on the portico of uh, King David Hotel overlooking the Temple Mound, uh, the old city of Jerusalem. We're talking with some good friends of mine, Russell Fry, a congressman, Eric Burleson from Missouri, a congressman, and Matt Engel and Betsy Korn, who have helped bring us here through the American Israel Education Foundation. We're talking about what we saw today, and we went down to the very southern part of Israel the, to visit some kibbutzes where basically communes where people live and work together, largely agrarian, uh, growing a lot of crops. But it was an area that was attacked on October 7th. And I cannot believe what we saw there today, Eric. Describe in your words what we saw and the impact it had on you. Yeah, it was absolutely life changing. You know, we saw some of the video footage. Everyone saw these attacks from different videos that were really recorded by the members of Hamas who were attacking. They were using GoPro cameras. We all saw it on television, but to actually be there and see the bullet holes, to be able to feel the bullet holes in the walls next to children's playground areas, next to trampolines, and and seeing the kids' toys, seeing the, the homes that were that were burnt up and know how many people were slaughtered. And what was so the juxtaposition was that we're talking about a place that I, I'm, it's so lush, the flowers and it's in spring. It was just a beautiful setting. I mean, a great place. You can see why people would want to live there. And to think of the fact that you had all of this beauty and love and joy and clearly a, a community of people that were very peaceful and yet the most evil, absolute evil is the only way to explain um, what what happened to them. And that's, it's just life-changing. It really stood out to me as we were walking through. It's like time stood still. That morning on October 7th, the the toys were still there where the children had left them. The, the laundry was halfway out of the laundry basket where someone was doing laundry and the, the terrorist had come through the fence, cut their way through and gotten into this kibbutz to murder, to rape, to pillage innocent Jews on that day. Russell, what impact did that have on you seeing what we did today? Yeah, thanks for the question, Mark. I I think for me, you know, when I first arrived, it, it was just empty and silent and quiet. And I, I don't know why it flashed into my head, but everyone's seen pictures of Chernobyl, right, where there are towns that are gone and there's a swing set there. And and this kind of reminded me of seeing something like that, that there was very little human activity. And like Eric said, just to see a, t- a once thriving little community um, and they've got flowers and bushes and crops and houses and playgrounds and cafeterias to see that just completely empty and not just empty, but destroyed. You know, when you walk through these houses that are completely um, burned up, uh, when you see um, burned equipment uh, and and things in the house next to somebody's children's shoes, like that's, that's, I mean, I will remember that for the rest of my life. 
And Eric, there's a lot of truths that are being overlooked or are being masked over in this whole ordeal. Yeah, and one of the things that I'm going to take back with me, and I and I hope that this listening audience can tell everyone about, is that um, is that the civilians, the quote unquote civilians in Gaza, the Palestinian civilians, were the ones that that entered on the third wave after things have been cleared by the military, by the Hamas military, they came in and looted and kidnapped. So to say that they, that the civilians, the quote unquote civilians in um, Gaza and Palestine are innocent of this is, is not exactly accurate. We also heard tonight from a family of a hostage that was taken at the Nova concert, an outdoor concert. You've seen the video of it. Hundreds of people killed there and many, many people taken hostage. Matt, what what type of impact did their testimony tonight have on you? Yeah, it's really tough to hear. I mean, the uh, the Nova Music Festival is is a site that, for me, hits me right between the eyes, and, and, and I have a hard time getting past that because it's it's a scene of thousands of, of mostly young people, 20-somethings in the, the prime of their life, just celebrating life, celebrating music, despite being you know, in a country where there's so many challenges and so many threats around them, just, just living life to the fullest and, and to be attacked in, um, in broad daylight at, um, at, at, uh, at sunrise when they had no idea it was coming, the utter pure chaos of them running in all directions in open fields, hiding in the grass, trying to get away, hiding in little shelters and, and, and just being massacred um, and taken hostage is, uh, is to me something that I have really trouble wrapping my, uh, my head around. So, um, you know, obviously you, you brought up the point of, of um, in this case, uh, you know, one, um, one, one, one individual who was, uh, who was taken hostage and, um, you know, there's 134 uh, folks from Israel and other countries around the world that are, are still sitting in some fashion in Gaza. Uh, and uh, we certainly can't forget to find a way to bring them home. And that's what the uh, IDF, the Israeli defense, uh, is now facing. We heard from a brigadier general today talking about these difficult decisions they have to make, this almost gentle, surgical, uh, precise um, finishing off of Hamas while keeping in mind the precious hostages that are there and their lives are in danger. Right, Betsy? Yeah, it's uh, it's a unbelievably difficult uh, calculation that they have to make, and uh this is the trauma that the country is going through. They know and they are determined that they they have to win this war. They have to. They have to defeat Hamas and they have to get back the hostages. This country needs to survive by by having this done. It's it's this country is always going to be in a little bit of a state of trauma after this because of of the horror of what happened. But um, we've also seen with everyone that spoke to us today, even those who who experiences trauma uh, very personally. And everybody in this country is, has experienced this trauma personally, but there is a resilience in this country that they are going to succeed and they are going to not just get back to normal, but get back to a better a better place. And that's the only thing that, that gives me any any hope and any um, any faith in, in what's to come is is I do believe that uh, we are all going to get through this together. And I'm so appreciative of, of everyone who's coming to this country uh, to show their solidarity, to bear witness, and particularly to all the members of Congress who are with us today who are taking time out of their very, very busy, busy schedules and um, are taking what they've learned this uh, past few days and in the next couple of days and are going to go back and be able to talk about this with their constituents and with the press and with everyone who is going to be talking about this, which is very meaningful to all of us and very, very important. Well, thank you to our guests, Matt, Betsy, Eric, and Russell. Thank you for making this a memorable evening out here on the portico of the King David Hotel, a historic uh, building in its own right. Look, folks, we've got to stand behind Israel Israel must eradicate Hamas. This could all be over tomorrow if Hamas would simply release the hostages and surrender. Case closed. Hey, thanks for listening to Mark Alford's America. I know this has been a little heavy of an, of an episode, but it's something we need to talk about and keep talking about. 
until those hostages are freed. Appreciate you being with us. Love you guys. Hey, thanks for joining us for Mark Alford's America. We'll talk again next week. Until then, remember, I believe in you. I believe our best days are still ahead of us as a nation. I believe in America.